Hi, this is uh, Jay Harwood. It's the latest edition of Amazing Mets Love Life Podcast. Two old friends, teammates, and now coaches, uh, Mike Palfrey and Billy Wanger. Billy, um, Miller School, I know I'm going to screw it up. How do you pronounce the town again? It's uh, Miller School of Albemarle. It's right in, it's in the uh, town of Charlottesville, Virginia, where UVA plays. And Mike, I can pronounce Wichita. Pitcher coach of Wichita State to 2019. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having us. Hey, um, does August 10th, 2018 mean anything to you guys? 2018? Yeah, no, 2008. I'm sorry, 2008. You can check. <laughs> this is what the thing is. Mike Palfrey starts against uh, Miami. Unfortunately, Mike, you lost. Um, got an L. And this was, it was Billy Wanger bobblehead day that day. <laughs> And George was nice enough to bring it into the thing. Um, you know, I it was a vintage Billy Wang number 13. Pal, you know, you couldn't win it for Billy. He didn't pitch in that game. You remember about the game at all, Mike? No. No, no, I do not. But that's a pretty good bobblehead there, Billy. Yeah, I, I didn't. Of course, I don't have any. So what's new, right? <laughs> hey, I got another staff for you guys. Billy, in your illustrious career, you stayed 422 games. Only two for Big Pelf. What about that? Well, how many did I blow? I don't know that. You just got two saves, but uh, <laughs> I can't. I can't get. I can't do anything if I can't get the game. Yeah, I tell you a game that I remember Pelf pitching, and it was against. Uh, oh gosh, was it Cincinnati? It's like early. He threw like heck, I'm nine innings, gave up like one hit, and lost one to nothing. Or oh, that was unbelievable. I mean, he was he was very talented, very good. Yeah. Let me ask you guys, did, when you guys were teammates, did you ever think you guys would be coaches? Oh, yeah. I knew I'd coach. I knew uh, I knew I'd coach. I, I enjoy uh, kids. Uh, I, I knew I was going to coach high school before I coached college or anything like that because your restrictions are a little – you don't have as many restrictions on, on the high school side as you do with the NCAA and – and on the pro side, you, you actually have a voice and a mold. It's hard to – it's really hard to mold kids uh, when they get to that – into that college set. I, don't, I do not have the personality for that. How about you, Pubs? You thought this would be where you wind up? Uh, yeah, I think – you know, I think towards the end of my career, you know, when I started to become the older guy um, – in the locker room, kind of similar to what it was when I played with with Billy. And no, I'm not calling you old, but oh, uh, I am. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I started to be that little, you know, as the guys came up, try to try to get them comfortable as possible and try to make their, uh, you know, the transformation a little bit a little bit easier. You know, get them acclimated a little bit easier. And uh, so it kind of got me on the idea of wanting to coach and wanting to give back and try to try to help these kids and. Um, I'm fortunate enough to get to be able to do it at my alma mater where I went to and um, been pretty good. You know, same type of, you know, the same thing I talked about at the end of the career, same thing that, you know, Billy did when I was, you know, when I was in New York, because he was the older guy that, that would, one of the few older guys maybe that would, that would talk to me at the time. Now, if you went back to school, you got your degree, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I went back right after I uh, finished playing because, uh, you know, obviously getting into coaching, it, it's, it's recommended that you, that you have a degree. So I went back to finish up to make sure that, if the situation ever, you know, came about at Wichita State that I would, you know, I'd have another checklist, another thing checked off the box. I mean, you guys had a great career, powerful number one draft pick. Billy, you know, still has a record, 11.9 strikers for nine innings, 187 batting average against. Do your players know who you are? Do they know, you know, what, you were major league guys, you try and tell them, and open up to you, both of you guys. Go ahead, Pell. I want to hear how that works for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, some players, some players remember, they don't think they remember exactly. Um, you know, these kids now are, um, you know, 18 to 22 years old. Uh, you know, I, I have a kid in here now uh, that was in my office right before I got on the Zoom meeting, and I asked him, I said, hey, I got a Zoom, I got to do a Zoom thing, and I'm doing it with, I'm doing it with Billy Wagner. Yeah. And he's like, I think, I think I've heard of him. I'm like, dude, he's one of the greatest closers of all time. And we're, <laughs> what are we talking about here? I use him uh, on the MLB, the game. He's my closure on the MLB, the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know if he's more of like an outdoor hunter type game. I don't know if he plays video games, but I said, dude, I said, what are we talking about here? But a lot of these kids, I think uh, they're not, 
you know, our, our, our head coach here at Wichita State is Eric Wedge. He played in the big leagues, managed in the big leagues. And they don't remember him uh, when him playing or him, you know, maybe even him managing. And, you know, they were at that time, uh, you know, being 18 to 22 years old, those kids were, were four years old at the time, you know, in the early, you know, in the early 2000s. So they don't they don't remember him, you know, either. How about you, Bitwax? No, no. They, you know, the, the, what I get is how they, 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 they come to me with the old, hey, I lo- you gave up a home run last night on my video game. I mean, I get that. I mean, that's as much. And they don't even realize the significance of that. Like, yeah, hey, I just want to let you know I'm on that video game. They have no significance. Guys aren't historians like we were. I mean, nobody, you know, thought about Tom Seaver, Nolan Ryan, Bob Gibson. I mean, you just didn't. I mean, when we were coming up in a different age without the social media, you really, I mean, to watch a Monday day, a Monday night baseball game, you know, or the weekend series was tremendous. So you were really on top. And so, you know, you looked at the newspaper, you looked at the box score today. I mean, it's, it's a little different, but, you know, to, you know, I think, you know, just the time of where they're at and these kids with social media, they just don't put significance into that. I mean, you, your numbers don't mean anything. So Billy, you were saying they don't come and remember all of your four twenty eight two saves, huh? Just the parents. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that's when you know you're old bill the parents come and go oh, i remember when you were pitching with the mets i remember oh my gosh i remember and you're like yeah and, and the kids that go the parents are always looking at the kid going hey do you remember do you ever remember me talking about this guy and they're like no no i don't have any idea who it is so i, I mean you know in some ways that's good but i mean <clears throat> it is just a different different uh age Pal, you know, baseball at college is a year-round thing, right? You have four ball. Just tell us how, you know, what kind of a commitment it is for you in Wichita State. Yeah, and, and, you know, similar to the, what Billy just said, and recruiting-wise, too, uh, you know, when we talk about Wichita State, the if we were recruiting the parents, we'd get a lot more commitments because the, because the parents remember Wichita State. Uh, the kid for that, the kid's like, well, I've never even heard of this place. What is this, you know? Uh, but when you get when you get to talking about the parents, oh yeah, I remember Wichita State. It was Wichita State back in the day. It was it was a national powerhouse and all this. So mm-hmm. uh, same type of thing that the parents the parents remember uh, parents remember Wichita State. But same type of thing. But college coaching is is uh, it's extremely tough. There's a lot of you know there's a lot of rules you have to go by. Uh, you know we do individuals first part of the fall. Uh, then we have a team phase, and there's a team phase that consists of 45 days total. Uh, and you can only practice 27 times in there in that 45 day window. Uh, and you know, it's 20 hours a week and then goes back to, then now we're back on to individuals again, cause we finished the team phase and that's eight hours a week, which includes four hours in the weight room and four hours on the field. Uh, so we do it three times a week and, and get our four hours in. Um, uh, but then in the summertime when we're out recruiting, I mean, it, it's, you know, of the 60 day window here in the, in the summertime. I mean, we're probably gone for 55 of them traveling around all over the country. And, you know, sometimes that includes being at a tournament and watching baseball from 8 AM to 10 o'clock at night, you know, so it's pretty uh, exhausting. It's a lot, it's a lot of hours. And, you know, as Billy mentioned earlier, there's a, there's a ton of rules that you have to abide by as well. And um, it's extremely tough. Bill, you have traveling teams during the summer too. I remember. I do. I do, and like uh, Mike was saying, we, it, you know, the game's changed so much. I mean, we we're in Atlanta twice. We're in New Jersey. We're um, Cincinnati. I mean, you play in these week-long tournaments, and I mean, you're really, I mean, it's so hard to, um, you know, with rules. I mean, it's an all or nothing like spurting at 55 and 60 days when when colleges can recruit. So you're throwing these kids out. Really, you feel like you're throw them to the wolves and you're like, Hey, here, here's, you know, a 16 year old kid. And you're going, Hey, I need you. To, we're going to play in a five day tournament where you play seven or eight games. And we, Hey, I, I don't major league teams don't have pitching staffs for that. And so we're, you know, you're, you're throwing kids, you know, you, you have to be very protected. And that was one of the reasons I got involved in, in high school was because I felt like the, the process of development was being left behind because of the winning and parents wanting everybody to feel good about get, being on a team and playing. And so it, now, you know, for, for a college, it's so watered down. I, it's very hard for 
you know, for Mike to go and go, okay, because he, I guarantee he gets emails, text messages, videos about every kid. And they're like, hey, come see this kid. We're playing it. We're at Lake Point. We're going to play this time. He's pitching at this time. And so, you know, everything is, there is so much to it anymore. And, you know, for me, I, being through the whole thing with uh, pro ball, you know, I feel, you know, I, I feel a responsibility to the colleges not to call and say, hey, I got a kid. Because every time you say, I got a kid, I, you can hear in the coach go, huh, because everybody has a kid. Yes, and so you're do. really having to, you're really having to say, hey, you build that relationship through um, certain people. You go, okay, I, I trust this coach. I trust uh, this player's, you know, what I see. And so I'm going to put them in front of this. Uh, I, you know, it's, you know, we've had, I've had a lot of successful high school kids playing at a high level and going to play pro ball and stuff like that. But for every one of those guys, there's not a kid that I've ever sat down and met with, with their parents that said, that said, Hey, you know, I'd like to go play division three baseball. And I'd like to, I, and, and, you know, I, I'm a division three prodigy. So going out there and saying that, uh, you know, they, they're all looking for the, the, the Vanderbilts, the Floridas, the SEC, ACC, these schools that, you know, um, make it very difficult. And they don't realize the, the, the limit that these schools have and what, what the whole process is. So educating them in the high school has been a real developmental thing for me to sit there and be realistic. And not so that, they, that they can't go play at a Wichita State and stuff like that, but to, to say that they, uh, you know, there's only limits. You can't go everywhere you want to go. You got to go where you can play and get on the field because everybody wants to be a pro player. And I, and I applaud that. I, I just, it, now it's as a high school coach, you have to be more realistic because it, it's very, it's, you know, now you have the portal uh, and, and, the, and the nails and the stuff like that. And it makes it even more difficult. So you got to be more realistic with these kids and going, Hey, this is, this is, you know, not a bit. You got to, they've got to learn the responsibility of, who they are, and it's a lot more in the high school than I, than I was ever exposed to in high school. I, I never felt like, you know, it was go out and play. And more people need to talk to, to kids about colleges and how to approach it and to be realistic with it so that when they do get to college, you know, they can understand when a coach or pitching coach is giving them adjustments and, because these kids are just show up and play and have no – they have a hard time with that. With that, So that's why I got into to a high school – Mike, how many of those calls you get a day? Uh, get, it, get it, get it, get it. Billy Wagner's he's exactly right, man. We I get a ton of e emails, ton of phone calls. You know, we'll reach out to a coach about uh, some kid we heard about, and then he tells you about three other kids he's got on the team. Three other guys. I got a guy. I got a guy. So we hear that. All, we hear that. We hear that uh, pretty pretty consistently. And same thing that Billy said. You know, like we try to talk to the kids and and. You know, the SEC, the ACC, the Big 12, that's 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 sexy, you know. And these kids don't understand that, that the only way you can get better at baseball is by actually playing. So, but some of these kids I feel like would, would be more comfortable and be okay with going to the SEC and sitting the bench and versus coming, coming going somewhere where you can play, you know. Uh, but like I said, the only, play, the only way you can get better is you have to play, you have to be, you have to go out there and play and have an opportunity to play, you know, and you know, it's hard to go to the SEC as a freshman and contribute right away. You know, uh, hard to be in any D one school and contribute right away as a as a as a significant. I mean, D one baseball in a whole is crazy. It's crazy good. The schools that you don't know of are better than the schools that you do know of most of the time. I, I mean, those schools just don't get the. You know, they don't have the media and the marketing department. They don't have some of these. Uh, and, and we've talked about that. I'll bet you I've sent more kids to schools they've never heard of than what they've heard of because it's like, hey, you need to go see this. This fits your mold. This is where you'll play. And, and like, I mean, you know, it's very hard. It's very, it's hard for, for everybody. Guys, let me ask a question to both of you. How much of the experience in New York the, it helps you talk to the kids? Like, both of you guys had surgery. Uh, Mike was the number one pick. Um, had a couple of losing seasons, really got hurt at the end of his career. You know, dealing with the media market in New York is a tough thing. Does that help you, you think, when preparing these kids for, for you know, for their experience and what, you know, dealing with, with, with New York, the ups and downs of a, of a pro career? 
Eight definitely tell them problem. how not to do it. Tell them how, I, I think that, that really, because I wasn't very good at handling it, because as much as you can be, um, you know, everybody likes you to be, you know, um, stand up and outright. You, it's so you can't be that way. You, can, you have to be a way more politically correct. And so, you know, some of our kids who end up going to play uh, for these national teams and for uh, and play pro ball, um, you know, that's one thing I talked to him about. I said, you know, you can't always say what you want to feel or want to say. It, it just, you know, being out, being truthful is not but that you've got to say it in a, a very much more Tom Blavin way. I said in a David Wright way. I, I've, I've used them as examples because I was saying the same thing they were. It just wasn't it didn't have all the fruits and flowers to it when I said it. It had a little bit more teeth to it. And so my learning experience through Philadelphia and, and New York allowed me to sit there and go, hey, I, I wouldn't approach it this way. I think I would do that. And surgeries and things like that have made it easier to to talk to these kids and, uh, you know, and, and talk them off the ledge because these kids get into that senior year and man, they are a wreck. I've got seniors right now who are like, oh my, where am I going to go? What's going on? And having experience to go through pressure allows that. And I'm sure Pelf deals with that a lot more too. I just think that all, all of the experiences of pro ball, everything, even playing in college, I think it just allows you to be able to relate to the kids. You know, and, and you have an idea of what they're going through. You have an idea of what's what's going through their head and allows you to be able to talk to them, be able to relate to them and, you know, help them get, be able to get through it, be able to help them get through the, those times. You know, whether it's an injury, whether it's it's they're struggling, there's adversity, uh, no matter what it is, it just allows you to be able to relate to them to like to be able to help them and help them give the through it. Hey, brother, I've been there. Uh, you know, this is what this is what went through my head. This is the things that I tried. These are the drills that I tried on certain certain things, adversity. Uh, just being able to relate to them, you know, obviously from, from past experiences. I think the adversity is what makes it easier to be a coach. You know, if you're a very, if you are like, <clears throat> if you've went a player and you've not had success and failure, you, you can't, you can't talk to these kids today because there's a, there's just a, you know, a way you have to approach each kid. You know, the kid that's out there and who's dominating and, and perfect, you you know, you got to keep them grounded and humble and understand the kid that's going out there pitching his tail off and hitting balls at people and said, so you got to be able to sit there and go, hey, you're doing fine. You have to be a little bit easier because you know, you also know how judgmental the people in the stands are too. You're sitting there and I mean, guy hits a ball hard to second baseman and dad's just going crazy because he hadn't got a hit or the guy, you know, the umpire misses a ball, a pitch, and, you know, the, the kid's looking up in the stands. You have to be a way more way more on top of it and, and, and talking to these kids to calm them down and keep them in the moment because the moment is where they struggle with it. the most is, you know, they're so emotional anymore. And so, you know, having the experience to, to pitch in some big situations go through big situations also will always be something that coaches need. You know, the guy who was the most successful, Ted Wayne, who had the hardest time coaching because he couldn't understand why people couldn't hit 300. He was like, I just don't see it. I can't understand why, you know, it's just that easy. Being a professional player doesn't give you, make you a great communicator. And being a great communicator takes time because you have to talk to each kid completely different than the other one because they all have – a learning language that they have to learn from. And if you go out there and you're a hardliner and you know, you're a ball buster and you're sitting here telling them this is a way, well, you may miss out on the best part of that kid instead of sitting there going, Hey, I'm going to help you be successful. I want you to be successful and I'm not worried about me. When that happens, that kid usually buys in and then you start to see his, you know, his fruit of his hard work. So, you know, I, I think the, you know, like Pelf saying, going out there, even, you know, when Pelf started and he, he was going through there and, and the Mets, we didn't help him by any means with when he was going through his, his the, the losses. There was a lot of team losses there that he had to suck on. And we ended up having to, you know, he had to stand in front of that, that the media and take that beating when, you know, uh, a lot of games he played, he pitched very well and should have got a win. You know what, that really, allows, Mike never went away, went away from anything. He always stood right. up. You know, I remember that Mike very distinctly. He never ran away. He always stood up and, you know, good, bad, and different. I mean, what do you remember about that kind of stuff, Mike? 
I think, you know, through the training and through all that stuff, I mean, uh, you know, Billy, Billy was saying earlier that, you know, the New York media, you know, if you did well, I don't think they usually wanted to talk to you. But anytime anything went bad, they wanted to talk to you. So if they were talking to Billy, it was after an outing that maybe didn't go well. And it was a lot fresher in his head because he just he just pitched the last inning. So it had been a lot fresher. So there's still a lot of emotion going on that you had to that he had to, you know, temper down or kind of control, you know. They're hitting you up right after you right after an outing didn't go well and you're 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 competitive and you're pissed off and you're not in a good spot. And then then you gotta then you gotta answer questions. Well, it becomes really hard, you know. Uh, and I think I think over time, you know, I had some time to decompress, you know, because if I was already taken out of the game or we didn't win and, and kind of settled down a little bit. And, you know, for me, I think I just learned to give them try to the, try to give them the same answers as usual, you know, and just kind of repeat those answers and then never point the finger at anybody else. Just take the blame for it and, you know, say, hey, I wasn't good enough today or, hey, I didn't do this or, hey, this was a mistake on my part. Uh, you know, no matter what what happened around me or what happened, you know, um, behind me or whatever may happen. I just took, I just took the blame of it. You know, a guy made an error. Yeah. Well, I, that's my job to pick him up after that. And I didn't do that. And I didn't do that. So that's on me, you know, uh, but just never be able, never point the finger at anybody else. Billy, I wanted to say, Chris, two seconds before a guy, uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, two years ago, you went from 46 to 51% this year, you know, 75 is the magic number. Do you follow it closely or, you know, your, your stats are just unbelievable with the, with the saves and the, Strikers from nine, batting average against. I mean, what what's your gut on this? Are you trying not paying a lot of attention? Well, you know, it, it's so hard to to not pay some of attention to it. Uh, you know, uh, I do, but I, you know, I think this is my seventh year on the ballot. Uh, early early in the whole Hall of Fame thing, it was really hard, but just because you, what you don't realize is you've been away for you know ten years. And you haven't been, you know, except through marriage, you haven't been like beat on and <laughs> all your blunders where all of a sudden when you get back into that, that, that pro realm, you know, all of a sudden you start reading about, ah, oh, he's not good in the big games. He hasn't done well. That was really hard for me because I had been, I was like, holy cow. I mean, here you look at the number and it was very hard for me. So I, I, I simply said, I'm just not going to deal with it. I'm, I'm going when I talk, I'm just going to be, you know, uh, as positive as I can be and, and stuff. But, it, you know, now, you know, of course, I keep my eye on it and stuff like that. I, there's people that let me know a little bit more, you know, making the jump last year over 50 percent was huge. Uh, but, you know, um, Jay, I said it before, just to be on that ballot is, is tremendous. I mean, there's so many guys that aren't you know, haven't had that chance or or did make the Hall of Fame and stuff like that, that I feel should have been in there. So, you know, either way to get in that and have that ability, that opportunity, you know, it's just, a, it really is a blessing. Here, let me give you some perspective. Gil Hodges got, got in this year. He was on the ballot 34 times without getting in. It was his 35th time before he got in, you know, 50 years in the waiting, but. Uh... He's way better than, than what, what I was in my game. And he, he gave more. And I think that's where people don't understand it. It's what, what you gave back and, and what you've, you've, promoted for guys I mean you know um, you know I, I you know you look back at a at a Dale Murph you look back at uh, Gil Hodges you look back at uh, Franco you look back at a lot of guys who who have had impacts you know it may not have always been right in front of the camera but they've had these major wow. impacts I mean you look at Johnny Franco and the impact that he's had in New York City and what he stands for in in the city I mean I love Johnny because I'm taller than him I mean, that's that's a huge thing for me that I'm taller than Johnny Franco. So if he's watching this, he needs to understand that I am taller than him. And, but he, he's one of my heroes. He's one of my heroes. And, and, and I want him to, you know, I, I think he, he deserves it. And what he gives to, the, to New York is priceless. I mean, when people think of 9-11 and stuff like that, it was Franco and, and Mike Piazza who right. stood out for those guys. And so, I, you know, there's different ways that they, you know, and, 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 you know, Johnny going out there and getting 424 saves. I mean, there's so many different ways to be appreciated. And, you know, some of these guys don't always get their just due. Maybe I don't get mine, but I have a lot of good friends and a lot of good memories in this game. The game has been so good to me. I, I, if I make it, it's icing on the cake. If I don't make it, you know, I'm very blessed. Pal, I got two things for you. A lot of people don't remember, but Mike is a big part of Mets history. First game in City Field, Pal started. Unfortunately, 
First guy. Didn't line up good, pal. The first batter. I'm not trying to laugh, Mike. I swear to God, I'm not. <laughs> I don't, it's first okay. batter. I'll laugh about it, it's, it's good. The first, the first batter in a new stadium. You're pitching. Everybody's jacked up. Home run. We're losing one nothing. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, here's all I remember. I, this is the power of the mind here. I remember John Main and everybody else telling me that somebody mentioned something, New York media mentioned something about no one's ever given a home run to the first batter of the game. And that went through my head leading up to the start over and over again. And I kept thinking about it. I kept thinking about it. So when, when he was up, I was like, okay, I just got to get through this guy and not let him hit a homer first batter. And obviously I made a mistake and he hit a homer. Uh, but that's the power of the mind because teammates and the media kind of put that in my head going into the start. That's never happened. New stadium, this and that, which is obviously a great honor to be able to do and pitch there. So that was going through my head. And you know what? The guy hit a homer. So I, I have thought so many times when I was at the, on the mound that I was going to give up a home run and that's happened. I, I, am, I truly understand what you're saying. I know there was, there was a time too. I think it was either 2008 and, some, we were playing the Brewers my, it was my last start of the year. And the, it was like, hey, you haven't given up a home run to a right-handed hitter. So the media tells me this before my outing. And it was like, all year, you haven't given a home run to a right-handed hitter. And Corey Hart was on that team, right-handed hitter. And I'm sitting there thinking about, man, this guy's taking going to take me deep. And I'm sitting there thinking, what in the world? I'm like, no, 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 come on, get that. Well, you know what? We, we played, and, and he came up to bat, and I started thinking about this guy's going to take me deep, and he had a home run off me. You know, obviously, I think as my career, as I got older and stuff like that, I, I learned to like step off and be like, "Hey, get that out of your mind! Like, what the hell are you thinking about?" You know. So I learned to stop thinking about that. But the power of the mind and what you think and all that is 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 so important. Our next old timers at game, Billy was able to attend. I know you can make it with the schedule. You got to promise me, Mike. I'm, I'm going to be 85 years old to the next old timers at game. Get to will me out to make you. You'll be at the next old timers at game, right? If you're yeah, if you're gonna be 85, I'll be I'll be I'll be there. 85, you look the same, Jay. Every yes, time he we does. See you. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. But tell, but tell, 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 but you had a good time at the game, right, Billy? Was oh my gosh, I tell you, it, the that was so much fun just getting to see the older guys. And I mean, if you're a historian, first of all, you're just blown away by watching Doc and and, and I mean Ray Knight and um, I mean, just I mean Ed Lynch, uh, just guys walk in that you you not really got to meet and see, uh, and then to, to be with the guys that you you do know the Piazzas, the Mike Hamptons, you know those guys, you know Pedro. I mean, you know, as soon as that happened, you felt like you were right back on the field. And I mean, for me, I, I'm on the field with Turk Lindell, I'm gonna have Johnny Franco, I'm with the Al Leiter. These are friends of mine that I'm sitting here going, you know, getting pictures. All of a sudden everything was just put into perspective how much fun your career was. And, and nobody talked about the home runs you gave up or how bad you were or how what they were just very genuine about it. everybody's talking about their kid who's playing or whatever. And I, you know, it was a tremendous, tremendous, um, I, I loved it. I loved every bit. I thought I put it on it done great. Uh, you know, I loved it. Help you probably you can you come back right next time we do something. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll do it just for you, Jay. I appreciate. You. Look for me. I'll be in the wheelchair, Mike. <laughs> hey guys, this has been a thrill. I've been really great reminiscing with you guys, and I love working with you guys. And best of luck to the Shockers, and really best of luck to your Miller team. And uh, you know, uh, maybe maybe Billy can call Mike one day. And say, I got a guy for you. Well, I was going to say, Mike, I've got a guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. You know, Mike, it's so good to see. You. I'm glad you're doing well. I know you. I'm so happy you're giving back. I mean, you're such a great guy. I know that. Uh, you know, these guys have no idea how special it is to have you uh, there and stuff. So I hope you do well. I uh, hope I see you probably on say, on some field somewhere in Atlanta. But uh, yeah. if so, please, I hope to to see you and say hi. Yeah, well, same to you. Glad you're glad you're coaching too. So good good luck, man.